The year was 1953. Construction of a deep water wharf at Mount Monganui had just started. A young man called Bob Owens moved to Tauranga and set up in business. In the 40 years or so to follow, the futures of Bob Owens and of Tauranga would be very much intertwined. Much of Bob Owens' business life revolved around the rapidly growing Tauranga Wharf, and in many ways he's contributed greatly to the port's extraordinary growth. From a small log handling operation with one forklift in 1958, to today's huge and diverse transport operations with over 2,000 employees, the Owens Group of Companies and the Port of Tauranga are today icons of successful New Zealand industry. Bob Owens officially entered political life in 1962. He was elected to the Bay of Plenty Harbour Board, a position he would hold for the next 26 years, including three as chairman. But Bob Owens wasn't one for merely keeping a seat warm. He was always what is today called a mover and shaker. Well, I came onto the Harbour Board in 1974, and Bob was at that stage clearly one of the senior members of the board, having been on for 12 years at that stage. And as he worked uh, in the port, he knew everything that was going on in the port, and people respected his views, which were always very forcefully put. In the mid-70s, of course, the big thing was the uh, decision to challenge uh, the Ports Authority's decision not to let us have a container crane, and Bob and Keith Calder were the two people who really drove the uh, objections through, appealed the decisions and finally got a reversal from the Minister. It took four years from go to woe and Bob's on record many times for making statements that were widely publicised about the uh, ridiculous situation where we weren't allowed as a development port to have appropriate heavy lift capacity. At the same time as his election to the Harbour Board, Bob was elected to serve on the Tauranga Borough Council. His 15 years service to the local council would also be a time of tremendous change. The following year, 1963, Tauranga became a city. In 1968, Bob was elected mayor of Tauranga City. Service to his community would always include the ceremonial, as well as the attention to the progress of the city he loved. Tauranga was a leader in the generation of hydroelectricity by local authorities and Bob was involved as chairman of Tauranga's Electricity Committee. Uh, council uh, had a, uh, a proposal that they would build these stations themselves, but difficulties arose. And to solve them, they brought the power board into the picture. And that took a, a lot of negotiating. And Bob Owens was right to the fore in uh, getting a satisfactory agreement between the two parties. In the absence of strong political influences in Parliament, Tauranga had an outspoken proponent for public spending on transport in Bob Owens. Seeing road and rail as the lifeline for the port as well as the region, Bob campaigned vigorously with the political leaders in Wellington. So he was Mayor of Tauranga, and it was just before he was also Mayor of Mount Monganui, which happened later. That's when I first knew him. At that time, Bob was pushing for the rail. Some people have said, and criticised Owen, saying that he was in the business of road transport and he was only pushing things to help his own company. I disagree with that entirely because he was very firmly advocating rail in lieu of road because he could see the balance between road and rail transport. They were complementary, not, <coughs> not in opposition to each other. One of Bob's unique achievements was his dual mayoralty when he successfully stood for both Tauranga City and Mount Monganui Borough. He made little secret of the fact that he thought the two towns should be amalgamated, but he made no overt effort to force that issue during his term of office. And I think he served as well. Uh, he was defeated after only one term in office. If he'd been allowed to carry on, I think we would have seen much more progress. It was that sort of individual. Horse racing is just one of the many activities which Bob gave support to. The Japan New Zealand Cup is a result of his dedication and the racing club's strength today due in no small measure to Bob's 30 plus years service. My own committee out there wouldn't go to Japan with me. It was a return we had agreed to make. And uh, 
There was a lot of feeling against Japan in those days, and they wouldn't have anything to do with it. Even my brother wouldn't go with me. I asked him to come. So uh, Bob Owens said well, he'd come. Although most of the time when he went there, as he said the other day, he went his way and I went mine. He was, had harbour board and log business to discuss. I was there entirely for the racing. Today, many wonder how one man could contribute so much to his community. He naturally had a lot of drive in him, didn't he? He could uh, assess things and he could put them on paper well. He wrote a very good letter. Bob's great ability was to sum up the problem, find somebody who could solve the problem and tell that person to get on with it and left him to it. He would get things done. And he wanted things done, he'd get them done, make sure somebody did it, which is very important in local body politics. A great travelling companion, partly because he knows everybody who, who is anybody uh, and uh, is very good at introducing you to the right sort of people if you want to contact. Today, as always, the man himself would modestly claim that he was just one of a great team who worked for the common goal. For example, the building of a harbour bridge. I stood for the harbour board at the same time because they said, well, it's a lot easier if your name's on two slips paper <laughs> than on one. So anyway, I didn't think I'd make one of them, but I made them both. So I, I came in here and it was like an old gentleman's club in those days. And uh, so I hit them with the bridge and got shut up very smartly so I didn't bring the subject up for quite some time until I got in the mail teens. 1962, and uh, I think the best move I ever made in uh, in the bridge was when I was mayor of Mount Monganui and uh, realised that Keith Clark would be the ideal chairman of the bridge committee, and that's how it worked out because he could uh, charm a snake. <laughs> <laughs> As we look back on 40 years of exciting progress of our district, we pay tribute to a man who more than anyone deserves recognition as city father, Sir Robert Owens.